One of my all-time favourite heroes of toy making is Don Pointer from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's born in 1925, he's 96 years old, young, and he made the most wonderful toys to make Americans laugh throughout the 60s, 70s and 80s. I came across him in the early 80s and corresponded with him. The stuff he's made is unbelievable. The first thing he was best known for, apparently, was whiskey-flavoured toothpaste. Did you ever see it? No, I never did. But the thing he was, for me, was best known for, which has gone around the world, is this thing here, which is the um, bandit box, the thing that pinched the coin and put it inside. So along with other items, I've got about 20 of these brochures showing his items. And these ones here, which I'm showing are here on the table. But that best known one I'll show you first because it's the one that's been copied the most, I think, of all. The bandit box. That's all it was. Just uh, this way around, he's going to pinch it like that. So all you've got to do is put a coin on, a coin you want to save. So here we are. Here's a one cent American piece. He didn't pick it up that time, let's hope that one. Woo! There it pinched it. Woo! Yes, it's getting a bit old in it, poor old thing. But it's extraordinary, isn't it? I'll do one more turn, then I'll tip it upside down and empty it. Too. I like this action that's slowly moving around. That builds up your suspense, isn't it? There's the coin inside. Beautiful. My goodness me. So this one has been copied many, many times by Taiwanese and all sorts of people, but I think this is probably the best of them, the one that he invented. And it's got, I think, the most satisfying mechanism. He went to Japan for all his products. He found, he found a company that he tied up with and spent at least two months of the year in Japan overseeing the production of these wonderful items. Now these ones here, the next few, are all coin banks. And this one here, for instance, I've got well, reasonably recently, the late ages instead of the early ages. It looks like a flower. Mm, it's battery operated, there's a bottom battery at the bottom. And something's going to happen when you put a coin on it, I think. Do you? Yes, well, they all do. Ooh, gobble, 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 gobble. It's supposed to be a dangerous looking Venus flytrap. A bit shaken and come out again. Let's do one more. Boom. Ah. I feel it ought to burp afterwards, don't you? Because it's eaten two coins now. But there we are. So that's those are two are a fairly early one and a later one. This is curious because it's not um, battery operated. It's uh, something that's um, spoon fed for coins. A bit tricky this one because you've got to get the coin in the right place and the, and the right weight of coins. But we'll have a go. We put the coin on there. We'll push this down, and we then release it. Oh, it's gone back on here. Let's see if I can put it a little bit further back. You see what's going to happen? The mouth is going to open, hopefully, gobble up your coin, which you're trying to save. You know, oh, no. Let's do it one more time. Put it on here. Leave it on the top there. Let's put it right way down. I'm pushing it against a little sucker there. Beautiful. Well done, then. After all those years. These are all 40-year-old toys. So some of them, what's, what's amazing about them is they are Japanese, so the engineering is good, and they're lasting really very well indeed. This is the most extraordinary one. Take his coin out, just read it in a minute. And do this one here, which is most extraordinary. This really fooled me. When I first saw it, I couldn't believe my eyes. It's a dog. When you push that down, out comes a long tongue, and quickly put the coin on. He's gobbled it up. Isn't that extraordinary? Let's do one more, shall we? Push that back. It's battery operated, of course. A bit longer. It's going to be quite quick. The kids have got to hurry up, put it on, and it gobbles it up. My goodness me. There's a battery door at the bottom. There's a battery at the bottom like that. And a little dog, well done, Fido. He's saved two cents there. That's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, there's my other coin. Then here's something else which is also functional, as opposed to just pure jokey, but it is very jokey. The idea is, um, in the old days, the stamps used to have uh, the backs of them need to be licked by the tongue. So this is a postmistress. You have to first of all fill that with water, put ordinary tap water in there, and then it's ready to use. And into that is a large tongue, which you're about to see. When you push this, out it comes. Get your stamp, which is, needs to be licked, spread it on there, which is, will be nice and wet by then, let go of it and stick it on the envelope, and it's ready to go. Very clever idea. What a bizarre mechanism, though. Of course, nowadays with stamps, which are have, have, have uh, you put them on a greaseproof paper and you just have to unpeel it. But that's a 
an extraordinary method of movement. So he does do wonderful things. This is a bizarre one because it's um, not functional like these ones. It doesn't collect coins or lick stamps. It just does something bizarre. It looks like I've got to put a coin in there, doesn't it? So let's have a go. Put a coin in. Put it on. Oops. It gets caught up there. Oops, there we are. Put it in. Oh, it's vibrating. Now watch very carefully at the back here. Did you see it? No, you probably missed it. I'll do it one more time. It's only a very brief message. Some of them, the messages, they gave you 10 labels saying things like sucker and so on. But my favourite was this one here because it says, you watch. Whoa. And now I'll hold it steady and watch this carefully. Out of order. Well, hang on a sec. Okay, it's out of order. What does it do when it's in order? No idea. And it said nothing about it in the structure what happened. Well, you can't. It's, it's, it's tongue in the cheek and it's a lovely idea that takes your money off you. And I suppose you are a sucker if you keep putting your money in it. But it's entertaining too, isn't it? I think the first one I've got of Don Pointer's pieces was this thing here, would you believe, which is a, a golf ball joke. And there's lots of these around, but this is probably the most advanced. It's a wind-up golf ball, would you believe? And the key is a solid one rather than a hollow square. It's got a solid square and you have to put it in. You've got to wind it up. You've got to make sure it's turned off at the back here and do a few turns. And it's got funny little feet which allow it to walk on the turf, not on the, on, on the fairway or on the, on the green. So like that. It's got a little thing at the back here which you hit with your golf stick. So you lay it gently down on the green, quite close to the hole. If you imagine me hitting it like this with the golf stick, then what happens? It walks. I thought it would walk straight into a hole, but no, that's dark. Instead, it decides to do a little meander around the hole, probably like that. But it's a walking golf ball, and it's got these little legs going like that. Extraordinary. And that, those sort of legs are made so they'll walk on a, a, a nice, a nice uh, grass that you get on the green. So. Also, when I was contacting Don, um, I'd lost a lot of these keys because I kept on losing them to kids. I had three or four with it. So he very kindly got his manager in, in Japan to send me a dozen more keys, which I'm very pleased with. Now, these, I think, are my two favourites of all these toys that you come across, all the 12 or 14 that I've got. Especially this one here, I suppose. This is a wonderful, bizarre thing. Uh, it's not a coin bank. It's, not, uh, it, it's just a completely bizarre thing because when you switch it on, which is obviously you want to do, That's right, it turns itself off. This was a prototype. Lots of people have copied this, but none of them have built up the suspense with movement and noise, etc., which I like. This is one I personally, according to the um, brochures I've got, was actually copyrighted slightly earlier, so perhaps he made this version first. Turn it on, and it looks, it's got this wonderful, you know, high voltage insulator. There's nothing but turn it to a ball. Well, I hope it was. Woo! He's misset, isn't he? Give me a little push sideways. Yes, well, this is 40 years old. All these toys are 40 years old, so you have to expect a bit of that. But that was a wonderful concept when I first saw that. It was just, and, it, and the children laughed and laughed when they saw it. It was so bizarre. This is a bizarre one which I've, um, Acquired, ooh, for, uh, 1986, I guess, but I've only just come across it again. I showed it when I was showing Bee Toys, and Don Pointer, I think, patented it about 1985. And it's got a bee there suspended over a flower because there's a little invisible bit of cord coming down from the top nylon cord. There's a magnet in the bee, and there's a magnet in the flower, so they're attracting each other. And when I put that down, that it'll come back to there. And on the display counter, apparently they had something which shivered like this and made it move all the time. The slightest bit of movement and that bee's body moves due to the clever way of balancing the thing. So it's very, very chaotic. And the wings shimmer and it just looks wonderful. So a very, very nice toy. No batteries involved. Just a charming little thing to entertain kids. Good one. Here's something which is very iffy because I've had it for so long, but there we are. And I didn't realise it was a Don Pointer item until I looked at the catalogue he sent me in 1984. The idea is it's a joke lighter, which instead of squirting you in the face or doing something with an electric shock, I've got both those in my collection, does this. It's got this stuff here which you have to shake into it, and the switch doesn't seem to be working anymore, so I'll just make a nice mess. Do you mind me making a mess? Put this in here, upside down, push it down like that. Yes. Yeah. Foam, 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 look coming out of the top as well. Squirt, 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 squirt. Oh, well, there we are. So it's a joke lighter which squirts foam all over you. 
on my nose as well. Oh, there we are. Then the last two I'm going to get up and just come over to here, see if I can reach across the ultimate one. This one here, um, it's, 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 it might work, it might not, but it's certainly a very bizarre one. I have to explain and perhaps move it, but see what happens. I'll push this. Oh, uh. his trousers are dropped and his, uh, yes. Oh, there we are. His face lights up. That's right. So that's what happens. He looks all menacing and then, oh, embarrassment because the trousers suddenly drop. His hands come across because he's feeling, you know, protective about himself. He doesn't want to display himself. And he lights up with a nice red light there because, well, it's not working very well, um, because he's embarrassed. He's an embarrassed Frankenstein. The last one, I think I picked up about, ooh, third or fourth of the John Pointer toys. This is just wonderful. It's such a bizarre idea. It's a box which you have to do something with. In fact, what you do is you push down like that. Oh my goodness me. It's pouring a drink. I'm going to try and stop it from doing another round as well. There we are. So it pours you a drink, it does a shot of whiskey, and it gives me a chance to celebrate the work of Donald Pointer. What a man, Donald Pointer. He's a tremendous inventor. Cheers, mate. You really made me laugh.